history of cooking in culinary sense for the chefs of tomorrow to succeed, they must take inspiration from the past. Aspiring chefs must strive to master the profession of which starts with an understanding of the history. Why we need to understand culinary history? Historical perspectives allow chefs to give greater depth to food. The rich tradition of culinary arts allow the chef profession to advance from an unappreciated industry worker to a highly admired and esteemed profession, ranking side by side with doctors, lawyers, and engineers. Now let's talk about the culinary revolution. The Turks invaded Constantinople at the end of Middle Ages. This forced the elites, nobles, and educated people to flee to the West. Many found Italy as their new home. In 1533, with the marriage of Caterina de Medici of Florence to Henry III of France, Italian culinary art influence is spread in France, where at the time French cuisine was underdeveloped and regional. During this period, various professional organizations were formed, such as Rotisseur, Chacoche, Sochet, Cousinier, Venegile, Moutaille, Boucher, Patiche, and Confisser. In 1563, Charles IX, son of Caterina de Medici, forbade serving meals of more than three courses per meal. At that time, the first course could have been composed of ten dishes and two to three soups. During the first half of the 16th century cuisines evolved. New variety of vegetables and spices were widely available. During this epoch, that page became widely popular among the elites. During the Grand Clay, the royal courts of Europe intensified the developments of cuisines. The excessive appetite and passion for vegetables of Louis XIV gave the chefs of the royal courts the opportunities and resources to develop new dishes and the teaching which whole of Europe. In 1765, Boulanger opened the first restaurant in the Rue du Poulet. In 1777, other restaurants called La Marque Dauphine opened all over the city. These were owned by traitors, allowed by the royal courts to only produce consommés. This royal degree prompted the traitors to ask the royal courts to force Boulanger to close the restaurant that was serving dishes other than consommés. The appeal was rejected, and thereon many other restaurants opened in the city. There are four factors contributing to development of the cuisine. Classic cuisine, geographic region cuisine, religious cuisine, and cultural cuisine. Now, who are the important personalities in the history of culinary arts? Do you remember Caterina de Medici? She was born on April 13, 1519. She is the daughter of Lorenzo de Medici, the Duke of Urbino, and Madeleine de la Tour de Vanier of the Royal House of France. Catherine was born into one of the wealthiest families during her time. The Medici's family was a powerful clan with line of dukes and popes and were great sponsors of art, literature, and science. She was orphaned at the age of 13, married Henry, the second son of the King of France. She became Queen of France on March 31, 1547. Catherine died on January 5, 1589, at Chateau de Bleu. Now let's talk about Anton Caramé, 1784 to 1833. He was the father of Haute Cousine, said to be one of the greatest chefs of all time, and probably the first celebrity chef. Caramé's life is a story of poverty to success. He was born on June 8, 1784 one of the 25 children of a poor family. He was 10 years old when abandoned by his father in a restaurant where he worked for six years. 
he returned to Paris in 1823. Karame started on the last and most important phase of his life. Through his cookbooks, he established himself as one of the best in his profession. Karame's popularity rose when he published Le Patiché Royal Parisian in 1815. The book was dedicated entirely on French pastry. In the book, he introduced classic preparations such as sponge cake, biscuit, cream puff pastry, fromage bavaroles, and Charlotte Roost. He died in 1833 at the age of 50. Who is George Escoffier? George Escoffier is hailed as the king of all chefs. He was born on October 28, 1846. As a young boy, Escoffier grew up in a happy family surroundings. His father was a blacksmith and his mother was a plain homemaker. They live in villeneuve Lubil, a village which nestled peacefully below medieval castles in the neighborhood of Nice in the province region. Escoffier loved and admired his grandmother. When he was a child, he played with her in her kitchen. His constant stay in his grandmother's kitchen influenced his devotion to the creation of artistic delicacy. Escoffier was 13 years old when his father decided to support his interest in art and took him to Nice, where his uncle opened Le Restaurant Francais. Life was hard in the kitchen in those days, all the more for an apprentice. His uncle gave George no special favor. Escoffier experienced all the hardship of the other apprentices. Apart from the work in the kitchen, he did the washing of pots and pans. He went to markets to buy ingredients, and he mopped floors and did all the other physical works in the kitchen. From his experiences with his uncle, known as a strict and straightforward man, he learned the values of discipline, hard work, honesty, and loyalty. Escoffier always remembered with gratitude the strict discipline and severity of his training. He would always remember with pride the hardship he experienced as an apprentice and would always attribute his success to those experiences. In one of his writings, he wrote, Honesty serves its purpose and open doors of opportunities, but humility keeps a man into reality. George Escoffet, as a chef, is obsessed in the cleanliness of work area, passionate about the hygiene of his employees, extremely strict and disciplinarian. I am the emperor of Germany, but you, Escoffet, are the emperor of all chefs on earth. Emperor William III of Germany said, Ferdinand Point, who is he? He was a French cook known as the Dean of Chefs, was born in Brice, France in 1897. His father, Auguste Point, was a restaurateur while his mother was a graduate of Le Cordon Bleu from his restaurant La Pyramide in the south of Lyon. Came the modern lightly thickened sauces, baby vegetables, and other aspects of Nouvelle Cuisine. What are the wisdoms of these culinary chefs? We start with Antonin Carame. Of the five fine arts, the fifth is architecture, which main branch is confectionery. He said, a true chef must have discerning and sensitive palate, perfect and exquisite taste, a strong and industrious character, should be skillful and hardworking, positive and committed and must unite delicacy, order and economy. Wisdom of George Ecuffier Society had little regard for the culinary profession. This should not have been so, since cuisine is a science and an art, 
and he who devotes his talents to service deserves full respect and consideration. The life of a chef is no idle one. Apart from the labor of actual preparation and serving of diverse dishes, his brain must ever be on the alert and his inventive powers always acute. But there is actual lasting satisfaction in accomplishing the best that can be accomplished. And last but not the least is the wisdom of Ferdinand Point. Every morning, one must start from scratch with nothing on the stoves. That is cuisine. As far as cuisine is concerned, one must read everything, see everything, hear everything, try everything, observe everything, in order to retain in the end just a little bit. A good bill must be harmonious as a symphony and constructed as a cathedral. The duty of a true chef is to transmit to the next generation everything he has learned and experienced. Food is one of the biggest aspects of culture. Food has even made its way into pop culture. I mean, the only reason anyone gets on Facebook or YouTube is to watch tasty videos, right? That is how I learned to cook too, but I'm not that good cook. Anyways, I would like to thank you all for listening. This is Learn With Marie. You are all amazing. Music